I'm meeting with Marty Anderson, an ecological statistician from Massey University. Could you tell us what is an uh, ecological statistician? It's quite a big word. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I'm fascinated with nature and natural systems. And one of the things that we know about natural systems is that they're incredibly variable in space and in time. And so ecology is the study of plants and animals in their environment interacting with uh, one another. And they do so in ways that are not random at all. Um, and statistics is a discipline that helps us to distinguish um, something that's kind of random noise from things that are actually not random but have some kind of signal. Mm. So what I do is I um, develop new methods that are designed to help us understand, model, quantify natural systems that are quite noisy mm -hmm. in space and time. So Marty, what are you going to be drawing for us today? Well, I'm going to be drawing something, which is a tool that ecologists use mm -hmm. to try to visualize quite complex ecological systems with lots of species in them all at once. Ooh. And this thing is called a multidimensional scaling plot, wow. or MDS. <laughs> MDS, no, okay. that's, easy, that's more digestible. <laughs> so suppose that you wanted to understand a system and you started by just thinking about two species. So imagine that one axis is the abundance of species one and another axis is the abundance of species two. So here's species one, here's species two. And if you were to go say, suppose these are fishes and you're looking on a rocky reef, you go to places along the New Zealand shoreline where there are no, uh, where, where fishing is allowed say, and there are kind of small numbers of each of these species. And so this place, each of these places, you would see a certain number of each of the species, and perhaps fairly small numbers. Suppose then that you went to some areas where there were, uh, where there was protection from fishing, and in these circumstances there were greater abundances of each of these species. So greater abundance of species one and of species two would put you up here somewhere. So the triangles and the dots denote different types of sites, and each site uh, is a position in the species space, if you like, okay? So that's quite easy to visualize if you have two species. And you can look at this plot and say, oh, look, the sites that have protection from fishing are somewhat more like each other than the sites that, um, that allow fishing to happen. And, and, uh, and these two sort of types of sites are quite different. Well, what happens if you have more species? What happens if you have five or 10 or 20, or 50 species? How are you going to visualize that? Each species is a dimension. The third one might be coming up out of the napkin, say. Well, one of the ways that we can do that is to calculate how similar two sites are to one another uh, in terms of the species they contain. So what proportion of the species are shared? There are lots of ways of measuring this, but one way is to measure how many species are shared or the proportion of species that are shared. So between site one, site two, site three, site four, say, one and two might share, say, 50% of their species. One and three might share 80% of their species and so on. Well, once you have that information, this sort of thing is called a similarity matrix. Similarity. How similar are different sites given the species they contain? It doesn't matter how many species you have, you can calculate this measure. From a matrix like this of similarities, you can construct a, a map in two dimensions that shows you something about how similar the sites are. So I can take the first point, let's say it's site number two, 
and put it on my map. This might be a site where there's fishing allowed. Then I can say, oh, there's another site where fishing is allowed, and it's quite similar to this one. Maybe they share 85% uh, of their species or something. So I can put that on the map and so on. And I can keep on adding points and adjusting their positions relative to one another so that the distances that they are on this map reflect their similarities as well as possible. And that's called a multidimensional scaling plot. It's a way of taking information which is happening in a large number of dimensions across lots of species and boiling it down to information about relationships among those sites based on the species they contain, say. So if there was a strong effect of fishing, we would expect a pattern on the MDS plot that looks a little bit like what we were talking about before, where there were just two species to consider. But now, the information in each one of these points is based on a whole set of species simultaneously. And I've worked out, well, these sites are similar to each other. These sites are similar to each other. And they're actually quite, quite different from those types of sites. And there are various statistical methods that you can use to work out whether that difference is an important one or not. So you can imagine that if you did an MDS plot and you wanted to know something about these assemblages of species and you did the plot and you found that you got something like this, where they were kind of all mixed up and looked a little bit more like a dog's breakfast. <laughs> you would sort of look at that and say, well, I don't really think there's much evidence that the communities of fish inside the reserve are that different from the communities of fish outside the reserve. Well, thanks, Marty, for <laughs> describing multidimensional scaling. Um, could you detail maybe or give an example um, where in New Zealand research you've used these MDS plots? Um, one might be looking at changes in the fish communities after the establishment of the Poor Knights Islands mm -hmm. Marine Reserve. So a lot of people uh, maybe will have visited the Poor Knights mm -hmm. uh, and had a chance to go snorkeling there. Amazing um, snorkeling. And, yeah. and similarly, some of the other marine reserves around New Zealand, they've been used quite a lot. So the Goat Island Marine Reserve is another one that people might be mm -hmm. familiar with. And in ongoing research by the Department of Conservation, we like to monitor what's going on over time in, in these marine reserves. So what happens when the reserve goes in and what happens over time to the fish communities and how can we characterize that? So MDS plots help to visualize the statistical results that we get more formally. Mm. Another example comes about when we looked at the estuaries around Auckland. Mm -hmm. So you might think about um, like the Manukau or the Okuda estuary or any of the major estuaries around the Auckland region. Um, the Auckland Regional Council, as it was um, some years ago, wanted to get a measure of ecosystem health in those systems, but there's hundreds of species living in the, in the sediments. And so how can you get a handle on all of that all yeah. at once? And so we developed a model of um, pollution gradients uh, across the region in zinc and copper and um, what was the other one? Uh, lead. Mm -hmm. So historically there have been high concentrations of heavy metals in the estuaries. We wanted to know how do the communities change as the level of pollutants decreases mm -hmm. over time. Yeah. And uh, so we came up with a nice model of that. And MDS plots are very useful to visualize. Is it changing? Is it getting better or worse over time as we monitor these, these estuaries? Mm. Yeah. So, so it's a very policy relevant statistical tool. That's right, that's yeah. right. And it's nice for managers to be able to see a picture of what's going on with the communities. Uh, as well as for the public of trying to communicate the results because the statistical analyses formally are the things that you're going to hang your hat on mm. in terms of knowledge of the system. Those usually come in the form of probabilities, which are a little bit harder to communicate. But if you can see a picture, it really helps uh, to get an understanding. So MDS plots are really useful that way. Yeah, because 
pictures are very useful and that's the uh -huh. sort of idea behind Science on a Napkin. Oh, very good, yeah. very good. Well, thank you for coming on Science on a Napkin. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Hannah. Thank you.